All right, this is lesson 2.5 on understanding numbers. Today we're going to take a look at factors again, but we're going to be looking at it in a couple of different ways. Number one, you're going to be finding what are called perfect numbers. Then we're going to give you another method to find factors using what's called the rainbow method, which is kind of like in pairs, but in a different format. And then finally, we're going to look at what's called prime factorization. So let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to learn uh, a few different ways of finding factors, uh, finding factors of a number. So we'll start with, first off, what's called a perfect number. So in order to tell you what a perfect number is, let's look at the factors of 6. We know the factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Now, how do you know you've discovered all the factors? Well, if you do it in pairs, you can go 1 by 6, 2 by 3, and then when you, when you try to find the 3, you've already gotten it here, so that means you've got them done. So always doing them in pairs will guarantee you get every single one. Now, what do you notice about adding 1, 2, and 3 together? You should notice that it gives you 6. Now, this is, may seem to be something that um, happens frequently, but the reality is it happens very, very infrequently. All right? It doesn't happen very often. The number 6 is called a perfect number because the factors add up to give you the number you started with. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is actually 6. Do you think there's a lot of factors, uh, perfect numbers? The answer to that is no. There's not that many. In fact, as you go further and further and further into the numbers down the number line, you'll find that there's only four of them less than 10,000. All right? And uh, after the 10,000 one, it makes a huge jump, and I'll show you down below what that is. So can you find another perfect number? Well, I'm going to give you a hint. There is one. It is less than 30, but more than 20. So I want you to pause the recording, and I want you to see if you can figure out what factors uh, what, what is the next perfect number? All right, well, let's take a look. You should have found that it is the factors of 28. 28 is the next perfect number. The factors of 28 being 1 and 28, 2 and 14, and 4 and 7. When you add 1, 2, 4, 7, and 14, you get 28. So that means that 28 is a perfect number. Now, the next perfect number after 28 is actually 496. And the one after that jumps all the way to 8,128. And the one after that goes to 33 million. Huge jump. In fact, the last time I checked, they were, they'd were only discovered 45 or between 40 and 45 of these perfect numbers because the numbers get so big, they're beyond our, our computer's ability to calculate them fast. So it's, a, uh, it's kind of a unique thing. All right. Now, I'm not going to, just to go back there quickly to, to think, to, to uh, make sure you understand, I will be asking you about this on tests and quizzes. So this is not something which is just a cute little idea that I want to introduce you to. You have to be able to know what perfect numbers are and how to find them. Okay. So be aware of that. Now, let's talk about common factors. One of the skills you're going to do in grade 7 in fractions is, is going to be using common factors, and we use this when we add and subtract fractions. Now, we're going to use the actual common factors to reduce fractions, and we're going to be using multiples of uh, uh, factors to find the common denominators. So these are two things you have to be able to do. So let's start with a simple example. How about this of the factors of 4 and 12? So I'd like you to find the factors of 4 and the factors of 12, and then start the recording up after you've, you've finished that. All right. Factors of 4, really simple. 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. Now, since we only need to have 1, 2, just write down the 1. Factors of 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Now, when you take a look at both lists, the word common means that it's in both lists. And there's not all the numbers are not in both lists. So if you, have, if you look here, 1 and 1 match up, 2 and 2 match up, and 4 and 4 match up. Now, it's not common to have all of 1 in the other, except that we know that 12 is a multiple of 4. So that's, uh, that's why this works out. But the common factors are 1, 2, and 4. All right. The greatest common factor is the one you're going to use when, use when you reduce a fraction. All right. Now, let's try another one. So, find the factors of 10 and 15. Pause the recording and do that. All right. Factors of 10, 1, 2, 5, and 10. Factors of 15, 1, 3, 5, and 15. The common factors are the ones in both lists, the 1s and the 5s. Okay. So, take these numbers, and I want you to put them in to this Venn diagram. So, pause the recording and do that. Now, the factors in the middle here, these are the ones that go into both the 10 and the, five, the 15. So we would use these here to reduce 10 fifteenths or 15 tenths if it was in fraction form. The factors of 10 are 2 and 10, and the factors of 15 
are 3 and 15. These are the ones that don't go into the other number. All right. Moving on, let's find another way of finding factors now. We're going to use what's called the rainbow method, and it's called the rainbow method because if you take and you join an arc across from one number to the other, which is its pair, it forms kind of like a rainbow, and you can see down here the rainbow over the number 12. So we know the factors of 12. We've done this several, several times now. We know they're 1 and 12, 2 and 6, and 3 and 4. Now, when finding them in the rainbow method here, what you would do is you would start with 1 and 12 on the outside, and you're going to work your way into the middle. When you get into the middle, then you're going to be done. So 1 goes into 12. We know that. And then 2 goes into 12. 2 goes in 6 times. And we know 3 goes into 12 four times. Now, if you look in the middle here, there's no number between 3 and 4, so that means we're done. So here is the list of all your factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. Okay? So here we go. You can take a look. Those are the factors of 12. Let's try a factor of 22. All right? Now, you start with 22. We know that 1 and... Well, actually, let's have you pause, pause the recording, and I've given you a hint here. There's only four to do, so it should give you an opportunity to do this fairly quickly. So pause the recording and find the factors of 22. All right, well, obviously we know that 22, the first set of factors of any number is always 1 and that number, so 1 and 22. Since 22 is even, we know 2 goes into it, and 2 times 11 is 22, so now we have to check 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And if you notice, uh, it's pretty obvious that in my numbers here, they're not there, so none of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 go into 22. So here are your factors of, of 22. 1 and 22, Ooh, and 2 and 11. All right. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, here's 30. I'd like you to do the factors of 30. Now, you have a choice here. You can do them in the rainbow method, or you can do them in the list method. So find the factors of, of, tw of 30, and then I want you to sort them into prime factors and composite factors and numbers which are neither prime nor composite. So pause the recording and do that. <laughs> All right, so factors of 30, 1 and 30, 2 times 15 is 30, 3 times 10 is 30, and 5 times 6 is 30. You'll notice there's no numbers between 5 and 6, so we've got all the factors here, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, and 30. And you'll notice except for 1 and 2, these are all your prime factors, 3 and 5, sorry, 2, 3, and 5, sorry, except for 1. And over here, these are all your composite factors, 6, 10, 15, and 30. The one which is neither prime nor composite is the number 1. Now, if you did it in a list method, it's the same thing, 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and 5 and 6. Now, when you met the number after 5, the next one is 6. So now that you've met a factor that you already have, you know you're done. All right, here we go. Pause the recording and find me the factors of 18 and sort them into prime, composite, and neither. All right, well, starting with the list method this time. 1 and 18 works. Since two go, 18 is an even number, 2 goes in, so 2 times 9 goes in. And then 3 goes into 18 because 3 times 6 is 18. 4 doesn't go in because it goes to 16 and 20, but not 18. 5 does not go in because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. And then 6 we've already done, so we know that we're now finished the factors of 18. So the factors of 18 are 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 6. The rainbow method is the exact same thing. 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and 3 and 6. Okay? Prime factors. Well, these are the ones on the left-hand side that don't have, um, except for the 1. So 2 and 3 are prime. Or composite numbers are the 6, 9, and 18. And the one which is neither prime nor composite is the 1. And you can see over here in our list method, except for the 1, these are your primes. And over here, these are your composites. Okay, so hopefully at this point in time you can find all the factors because you've done it in two separate methods. So now let's take a look at what are called prime factors, and we're going to do what's called a prime factorization, a great big word. And it's sometimes just called a factor tree because if you take a look at it, it kind of looks like a, a, a you know, Christmas tree, except it doesn't have the stand at the bottom, but it has the same shape. Now in a factor tree, what you want to do is you want to try to find all of the prime numbers that when you multiply them together, you will get that number. So there's four numbers down here, and if I multiply this number times this number times this number times this number, I'm going to get this number here, which is, is a 24. 
So to do this, what you do is you take a look at 24, and you think, think of two numbers, any two numbers that multiply to give you 24. Now, in this case, I chose 4 and 6, because 4 times 6 is 24. Now, once that's done, you notice this is a 24 level, this is a 24 level, so down here, this has to be a 24 when you multiply it together. So what two numbers multiply by 4? All right, and remember, we're trying to look for prime numbers, so 2 times 2 is 4. We never use 1, because 1 is not a prime number. And if you did use 1, it would never stop, because 2 would be 1 and 2. And then 2 would be 1 and 2, and then 2 would I mean, go on and go on and go on. So we don't use number 1, all right? Now, how do you make 6? The only way to multiply to make 6, uh, because it's composite, without using 1 and 6, is to use a 2 and a 3. Now, 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 are all prime. So the prime uh, numbers, the final prime factorization of this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Now, the next question is, well, we also know that 24 may not start with 4 times 6. What if you used a different set of numbers here? What if you didn't use 4 times 6 to get 24? What if you used 3 times 8? All right? Well, we know that we can't use 1 and 3, so this 3 just comes down all the way by itself. There's nothing you can do. It's already prime, so we know that this is going to be in our final prime factorization. Now, 8, can't use 1 and 8, but we can use 2 and 4. Now, 2 is prime, so it's just going to come down to there. Now, 4 can be made up of 2 and 2. Now, notice this is 2, 2, and 2. There's three 2s there and a 3. Look at this, three twos and a three. So this answer and that answer are exactly the same. They're basically, if you put them in, in, in fi prime factorization form here, three times two times two times two. This equals 24. Now I did three and eight, and then we up here we did four and six. There's also, you can use two and 12, all right? Now two, being prime already, just comes down for the answer. 12 can be made up of two and six. You could also have used three and four here. All right, and then of course two being prime comes down, and six is two times three. Now notice three twos and another three there. It's the same thing. So it doesn't matter what pathway you use to get to your prime numbers. All of them will always come out with the same numbers in the end. So each line, though, as you go across, three times eight is twenty-four. Three times two is uh, six times four is twenty-four, and three times two times two times two is twenty-four. So if any one of these lines doesn't equal twenty-four, you know you've made a mistake. So do you think the person beside you working will actually have the same uh, exact thing you do? Well, probably not. Because there's different pathways, and the larger composite number you get to, the more pathways you're going to have to the prime numbers, there's not necessarily going to be the same route. Somebody might have started with 4, 6, another person may start with 3, 8, and another person may start with 2, 12. But you'll all get the same number at the bottom. So, I want you to treat, find the factor tree for 28. It's okay. You'll notice that there's kind of a hint here. All right, you'll notice this comes down to here to here, so you know this is going to be a prime number. So what two numbers multiply to give you 28, and you can't use 1 and 28. So pause the recording and, fig and figure that out. Okay, so um, 28 is even. So we know that 2 goes into 28, and 2 times 14 is 28. The 2 just comes down because it's already prime. And 14 can be made up of 2 times 7. Now you know 7 is prime, 2 is prime, and 2 is prime. So my final primes here are 2 times 2 times 7. All right, if you have any trouble, go and watch the video again as many times as you need to. And if you still don't understand, come in and talk to me. We'll figure it out. So have a great time, and we'll see you next time.